friends and welcome to my channel. I am Fallon or welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm going to be making a birthday cake. Not just any birthday cake but the birthday cake from Claire Saffitz's dessert person. I'm a big fan of Claire. I think her baking philosophy is the same as mine. Uh, except that she's actually educated and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Today is actually my birthday, so I thought that maybe I would do this cake. It's from this cookbook, which is Dessert Person by Claire Saffitz. I've already gone ahead and actually made the, the tiers, the layers, yesterday. So how this is going to work is I'm going to show you how I made it chaotically. We only can do chaotic in this house, I'm sorry. I will also show you how I made the frosting and then we'll frost it together. We'll taste it on camera, see if it's good, and uh, we'll go from there. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is cut the liners for the bottom of the cake pans. I find that the best way to do this is to basically take uh, parchment paper like I'm doing here and take uh, the cake round and just trace it on the outside. So you'll see that I am doing that now. And I think I might have fucked it up even. But you know what? I'm not an artist. I'm not that kind of artist. So I do that for all three layers, really messily, don't even care. We don't run a professional uh, operation here. So here's where we go. Next, what I'm going to do is take some unsalted butter and grease the cake pans. Um, and the way that I've always done that is with a piece of paper towel, but you can use your hands or whatever. Um, I just find it's, it's, you're probably wasting more butter using a paper towel, but I just find it's cleaner. Maybe not so much cleaner if like pieces of the paper towel come off, but be mindful of that. Don't do that. You'll also see that I'm putting the pencil side of the liner facing down, the side that does not touch the cake. So just a tip. So next I'm putting in 360 grams or three cups of cake flour, cake and pastry flour. What's great about cake and pastry flour is that it is quite lightly textured and apparently makes her a fluffier cake. I don't know if that's true, but you know, I'm here for it, I'll, I'll do it, whatever. What I also like to do when I'm dealing with flour is transferring it out of the bag into another bowl. And you'll see that I'm about to do that. It's just easier to work with, I find. Taking the flour and putting it in a separate bowl and then taking a spoon and spooning it into the cup um, so that you're not like packing more flour into the cup when you're using it more as a scoop. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. Next, I'm gonna be adding two teaspoons of baking powder or eight grams. And next we have half a teaspoon of baking soda. I don't know why, but I'm very much struggling to get the spoon inside of the bag. And after that, you're gonna whisk all that shit together. Make them all live together harmoniously. And when you're done, set aside. So next I'm dealing with all of the wet ingredients. So I need to use two sticks or 226 grams of unsalted butter that I'm putting into a bowl that is way too small for the amount of ingredients I need to put into it. But anyways. And next you're gonna take one and three quarter cups of sugar and add it to the butter. And next I'm adding a quarter cup of grapeseed oil, which is like a neutral tasting oil. Mm 
I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm pretty sure I found a piece of plastic in in the oil or somehow a piece of plastic showed up in this concoction. Um, so this is me fishing whatever the fuck it is out. Maybe it's a microchip, I don't know. Now I'm creaming the butter and the sugar together with entirely the wrong equipment because the way that this was written was for a stand mixer with a paddle, which I do not have. So I was just making do with whatever the fuck I had. And right now I only have these, like a hand mixer with these really entirely the wrong things to do the job that I'm doing right now. As you can see, butter is flying everywhere. I told you that this is going to be chaotic, and I didn't lie to you. An hour later, after spraying butter everywhere, I just gave up, um, and I took a spatula, rubber spatula, and started doing, finishing it off, essentially. But it's nice and whipped, and looks really good. Here I'm adding a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Usually I would use vanilla bean, but I didn't have any, so I just used whatever I had on hand. Now comes the super fun and messy part. So this recipe calls for five large egg yolks, about 80 grams of, in total, and two large eggs. So I have to take all seven eggs out and then do the process of removing the yolks. The process that I use I don't know where I learned it. I just saw, I guess, somebody doing it, and I'm like, okay, this is how I'm gonna make sure that um, I can separate them. And you'll see that uh, not really a fail-safe method. This recipe also calls for you to add the eggs a couple at a time. At first I started with just one yolk at a time and then got really impatient and started adding a couple at a time. Uh, you can see it's nice and easy to mix at this point, but it gets much thicker later on and harder to work with later on. And the other thing that you'll notice is that that bowl is entirely too small for the ingredients I need to put into it, as I mentioned earlier. Batter flying everywhere. Nice. Here's where things start getting hog fucking wild. You see, again, the bowl is way too small, batter is flying everywhere, and zero fucks are being given about it. I mean, we're a chaotic baking bitch here, and I'm kind of living for it and I hope you are too. I got tired of splattering cake batter all over my kitchen so I decided to grab a bigger bowl finally after I was already done with the wet ingredients. So I'm transferring the wet ingredients into this bigger bowl and then now I'm going to add also the dry to the wet and start combining the two together. I don't know why it took me that long to do it was 11 o'clock at night at this point, so. You'll also notice too that I've gone completely out of frame and you can't really see what's going on inside the bowl, but it is what it is, right? And now what I'm doing is I'm little by little adding the flour mixture into the wet mixture. And I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm attempting to make that happen. And now I'm adding buttermilk, and then I'll add more of the flour mixture so it will alternate between the two.
The table seems to be getting more of the flour mixture than the bowl. And this is the finished product. And now I'm getting ready to weigh the amount of batter in each cake pan. So I want them to be all the same. However, you will see that I have two eight inch cake pans and one nine inch cake pan. So it they're not gonna be accurate at all. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. So I'm putting more of the cake batter in the nine inch um, and less in the two eight inches. In the recipe, Claire says that you need to put 482 grams or 17 ounces per eight inch cake pan. And as I said before, I have one that is a nine inch cake pan, so I put 482 in the nine inch that you'll see right now. Um, but in the other two, I had to divvy it up in a weird way. I guess the lesson there is that you just got to improvise with what you have. So that's what I did. So now I'm just smoothing it out in smoothing out the cake batter in the pan so they're nice and even and flat. And later I switched to an offset spatula because it was a lot easier to smooth it out in a nice way. And there we have it, it's ready to go in the oven. So they came out of the oven uh, a nice golden brown color, but the bottoms of them, two of them, were burned. So this is actually something that happened to Claire as well. Um, she has no explanation for why that happened, but it happened to me too. This just gives you a better look of the two that burned. Um, it's just on the edges there, probably just like, you know, sugary burn things. So here I am pointing out all of my mistakes and the fact that the uh, the cake, this, this one cracked a little bit, but whatever, it, it's fine. All right, let's make the frosting. So this is also in Claire's book. It's called the Classic Cream Cheese Frosting with a chocolate variation. So um, it calls for six ounces or 170 grams of melted and cooled unsweetened baking chocolate. So right now I'm just putting it over a double boiler and melting it. And I'll just fast forward through this melting process. Ding, look at that. And so now it is, there's one piece that was fighting me and didn't want to melt, but it's, it's gonna melt. So that's done. Don't mind my recycling that I just left conspicuously in the shot, but I recycle, okay? Just ignore it. And what you'll see in the bowl now is two sticks of unsalted butter, or eight ounces, slash 227 grams, and one pound, or 450 grams, of full fat cream cheese, um, which both have to be at room temperature, which, of course, neither of them were so this is what i have to deal with where it is impossible to freaking mix at all after a while i just gave up and tried to do it by hand and it wasn't much better um but at least 
I'm giving it a old college try, you know what I'm saying? So what I ended up doing was putting the mixture on top of my radiator to melt it down even more and to like make it easier. So this is what it should be, the consistency that it should be. Um, it's kind of like easier to whip or to mix rather. So it, it melted down to the perfect consistency because my radiators are really hot. So yeah. And this is just me adding a generous pinch of salt. It's sea salt, although in the recipe she calls for kosher. And here I'm adding one pound or 454 grams of powdered sugar. Um, this gets messy really, really quickly. Um, don't know what, yeah, don't know what to say about that. It's pretty lumpy, so I had to sift it. Uh, it is what it is. So once I have all of the sugar in the bowl, I'm folding it into the wet mixture by hand. In the recipe, she calls for it to be done in a stand mixer, but I don't have a stand mixer. And working with a hand mixer with powdered sugar is just gonna go everywhere, so I prefer to do it just by hand. And I, yeah, I'm just trying to clean up all of the icing sugar that's everywhere. Um, yeah. Hmm. Ooh, now comes the fun part. I'm going to combine the melted chocolate into the frosting mixture. And what's really great about this frosting is that since it's cream cheese base, it has a little bit of a tang. Um, and because of the amount of powdered sugar that's in it, it um, the tang with the powdered sugar really balances it out very nicely. Um, I much prefer having cream cheese based frostings for this exact reason. And there we have it all combined and ready to go. Um, really, really great frosting. Highly recommend. Now let's frost this baby. So I've already frosted the nine inch layer, which is the bottom layer. Um, and as you can see there, I've also, I've cut off, um, an, the excess so that I could taste the cake more than anything. And I've cut off also the, um, burned parts as much as possible. Um, and now I'm just going to put a generous dollop of frosting and go, go crazy. This is my favorite part. I'm not great at it, but it's my favorite part of making cakes is decorating it. Um, I've, there are quite a few like icing artists that I follow on like YouTube and stuff and the, like the stuff that they're able to do is amazing. But you know, I can only do so much with my limited amount of experience and tools. Um, it really is an art, much respect. I should also mention that the cake layers had been in the fridge um, and so I'm icing it relatively cold um, so that it's all like the crumbs don't come off and it, it's easier to ice. So it, it's not something that she recommends in the, in the recipe, but I know that it is much easier for you to ice a cold or frozen cake than it is to uh, one that is room temperature. So that's what I'm doing. And in fact, I think even the icing might be easier to work with if it's also a little bit cold, a little bit colder. Right now the icing is very warm and it was also very warm in my kitchen. So it can be a little bit difficult to because it, it's very gloopy um, but I think I'm managing and it's looking pretty good so here I'm doing something that I think Claire had mentioned in her video uh, or I learned it somewhere else but taking a bench scraper and kind of just moving it around the cake makes it look really nice and uniform um yeah I love that made it look really quote-unquote professional looking um 
but yeah, I like the, uh, the end look. So the fun part, putting on the sprinkles. In the recipe, she has really fancy sprinkles. I just found these ones at the grocery store. Um, yeah, it really zhuzhes up the cake. I think it looks really cool. Um, the contrast of the colors is really nice. The ones that she uses in the recipe looks a lot better on top of a chocolate cake, but or a chocolate frosted cake, but anyway, still looks cool. And there we have it, folks. I somehow managed to finish this cake. It's lopsided, it's ugly, but I bet it tastes good. I, I'm assuming it does. That's what it looks like. She's a beaut. She's heavy, she's very heavy. Let's cut into it and taste it. That's what she looks like. Uh, the, I feel like I need to put it in the fridge in order for the icing to actually set because it's, it's quite soft right now, but yeah, it looks good. I'm, I'm quite happy with the evenness of the layers, kind of. Not really. I take that back. Let's give it a taste. Oh no, it fell apart. Oh. That's really good. The cake layers are very, very dense. Um, this has like seven eggs in it, so it's like it's really light and buttery, which is nice. And the sweetness of the cake is cut by the frosting, which has uh, cream cheese in it. So it's not as sweet um, and it balances out really, really nicely, which I really appreciate because I, I don't like the overly sweet um, frostings. So it's very good. So thank you so much, Claire. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I don't have an upload schedule, but I just make videos whenever I can. Uh, definitely check back, turn on those notifications so you know when I post another video. Also definitely check me out Thursdays, Fridays on Twitch at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. I go live pretty much every week, so you should check out there and chat in the chat. Chat in the chat. So thanks so much for watching again, and we'll see you soon. Bye.